Hello, everyone, and welcome to ACEDS Live at ILTA ON. This is a series of interviews we are doing on LinkedIn Live with leaders in e-discovery and legal technology. Today, we are joined by Bill Piwanka, Chief Marketing Officer, Xtero. Bill, how are you doing? How are you holding up in the midst of these odd times <laughs> we're working in? I'm doing really well. Thanks, Michael. Uh, you know, in my uh, home office and gotten to know my neighborhood really well. Yeah, no, me too. I, it's amazing to me the the number of people I see out walking and uh, running and uh, bicycling and kids all in troops moving down the block. It's fascinating. I, I tell you, I, I love walking in the middle of the street. I'm going to be really bummed when there's a lot more traffic and I'm not able to do it. But right now, separate. You see somebody on the sidewalk, you just go right into the middle of the road. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, called me this morning. He's in Manhattan for the first time in five, six months. And he just described it as a ghost town. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, my son said the same thing. Yeah. All right. So let's dive in a little bit here. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Xtero. Xtero is always constantly creating great content, particularly some of the reports. Um, we've been fortunate to partner with you on some of those. And is, is there one piece of content that Xtero has created that really stands out to you? And, and tell our audience members, where can they go see it? Uh, okay. Wow. Um, like you said, we create a tremendous amount of content. So I don't want to say what one thing is best or better or whatever, because I think it's all really great. Um, I, let me do two. I, 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 every year we do your top three, Bill. Yeah, but I'll do, I'll, I'll do two for you. We'll, we'll compromise. Fair um, enough. Every year we put out a uh, in-house legal benchmarking report. Um, actually, we are in the process right now of, of pulling that one together for 2020, but anybody can go back and look at 2019, 18, 17, et cetera. It's, it's a really good survey to understand and benchmark yourself as to how is your organization comparing to other like organizations in terms of how you're spending money, where budgets are going up or down, uh, your use of technology, use of um, alternative legal providers or service providers, um, where you're having issues with um, your maturity along the EDRM in terms of process. Um, so I would say that's one. Second one that we just put out um, really talks more about, we call it a legal leaders uh, survey. And it's one of the things that we've observed is that the role of the GC or the CLO has really changed over the last 10 or 15 years. And Mike, you and I have talked about this where, you know, 10, 15 years ago, legal was responsible for legal advice and managing litigation and, you know, protecting the organization in the marketplace. But with the threat of cyber attack, with all of the privacy issues, with focus from the C-suite on um, cutting costs and becoming more productive, and all of the compliance mandates, we're seeing how what previously may have been pretty siloed organizations, compliance and privacy and legal ops, even IT security, are now merging together more because of the legal aspects that on all of those things. You know, I, I, I said, you know, IT security, clearly CLO GC is not going to worry about protecting endpoints or that sort of thing. But if the unfortunate inevitable happens and there is a breach. What are your, your notification or reporting responsibilities, you know, going to each of the different states or the federal agencies? And so legal has to get involved in that. When you think about the data subject access requests that are mandated by GDPR or CCPA or any of the other, you know, state uh, privacy legislation, uh, pieces of legislation that are out there, it, it gives the consumer or potentially the employee the right to say, give me all the data you have on me. Well, what do you, you know, there's one thing to take the request and to route it with workflow, but ultimately somebody has to go identify, collect, review, redact non, you know, other personal information that has nothing to do with the requester and then produce it out, which is very much an e-discovery capability, right? right? So you start thinking about how all of these things Emerging. If, if the request is, now that I know what you have on me, I want you to delete it. Well, you can't just willy nilly delete it unless you understand, is it under legal hold in any matter? Or is it subject to a retention policy from uh, a requirement from some kind of governmental mandate? So 
now compliance and legal, you know, e-discovery, privacy, they have to find a way to work together. Um, and so this report really starts talking about how are you doing this as an organization? Have you thought about how are you collecting data, storing it, managing it, securing it? Um, how are you sharing it? And, and can each of these different parts of the organization respond to the requests for the data? And how are you set up to address these issues going forward? Because the privacy stuff isn't going to, you know, go away. There's no way that, you know, the threat of cyber breach or, or attack is going to go away. And, you know, even with the current administration, the, the, we're still going to have governmental uh, regulations that are going to be placed upon us. So all of these things really are kind of coming together to say, look, you've got to have a strategy for how you manage your data and how you manage your governance, risk and compliance responsibilities just from a legal perspective. Don't worry about IT, GRC or HR or finance, but from a legal perspective, how are you collaborating, communicating and managing all of this with the start of it with that, that kind of atomic element being your data. You make some valid points. Um, it came up this morning in our session, our Lit Support Roundtable, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the pending legislation on privacy that there's two competing bills, one in the Senate um, by the Democrats, one by the Republicans. Do, do you see us getting closer to a national privacy law anytime soon? Uh, do I think the government is functioning at any level in any way? Um, I mean, I think, yeah, eventually we are definitely heading down there. Um, I think we're, I don't think I'm going to say anything controversial by saying that we're pretty polarized right now. Right. So when that happens and how, what it looks like will largely depend on who's in charge and that sort of thing. But, um, you know, you've got CCPA, um, 13 other states, I think, have existing legislation. California is already redoing CCPA. And then, you know, there's legislation throughout the rest of the country. In fact, if you go to Xtero.com, we actually have a, a map of the United States that you can highlight all the different privacy regulations by state and click into it and learn what the requirements are. But, you know, we can't function as a, as a society if we have 50 separate different privacy regulation. So I think it's inevitable that we're going to get to a federally mandated one. Yeah, no, I think that's right. All right, let's let's pivot a little bit. I want to give you a chance to talk a bit about Xtero's move from this sort of, I mean, I remember Xtero for years and, you know, was sort of, you know, classic plain old e-discovery. And now I see this pivot towards more of a, a governance risk compliance, this, this notion of GRC. Tell us a little bit about that that pivot and, you know, sort of the, the strategic look going forward. Sure. I mean, when you say plain old e-discovery, what you meant is incredibly innovative. That's correct. Full, full <laughs> process, you know, full EDRM, <laughs> not the, we have a full solution that starts a collection. No, you have a full solution when you start at identification and preservation. But if that's what you meant by plain old e-discovery. That's right, Bill. That's what I meant. So um, I'm in lit support mode today. It's lit support <laughs> day. Um, what I will say is, uh, I, I do want to talk, you know, about legal GRC, but um, I wouldn't categorize it as a pivot. I mean, Xtero is uh, pretty proud of our legacy of innovation around e-discovery, right? And looking at how we're, how much we're investing from a um, R and D perspective on the e-discovery process, from infusing artificial intelligence beyond just the review stage, you know, early case assessment, um, proactive identification of potential risks, um, helping identify custodians based on communication patterns that, that an existing custodian may have with others that you didn't even know about. Um, so looking at, you know, continuing to improve our, our solution from preservation all the way through review and, and production. So it's not a pivot but it does get back to what I was talking about, this shift in the role of, of legal and how much responsibility, how broad their responsibility is. And we look at it and we say, okay, let's just start with that atomic element, the, the, you know, your data. We've talked about the importance of a data map in e-discovery forever. 
And every organization should, but most do have a data inventory, but it's probably out of date. It's probably not used. If, if you have a really sophisticated e-discovery team, they may use their data inventory, mm -hmm. but is privacy using that? Is security using that when um, a breach happens? Because if a breach happens and the only PII on there is a list of birthdays of the marketing team versus a couple of petabytes of consumer data, you're gonna have a very different response, right? Yeah. So our argument is let's start with a enterprise class robust data inventory, one that you can tell where where your data is, who owns it, what third parties have access to it, and what governmental regulations apply to it. And then complement that with the other side of the coin, which is the ability to actually integrate with those data sources so you can validate the information in your inventory, add that really important information of how much, right? You get into the birthday list versus the consumer thing. Right. And almost as important is a data inventory is only good if like people say, well, what about the data you don't know about? Well, that's where a file analysis or these enterprise data connectors can help because you can go out and find the stuff that nobody knew existed or some rogue employee stored in the wrong place. So when you have that visibility of how much, who owns, what regulations apply, what third parties have access to it, where it all is, and you validated it, now you can respond to those requests, whether it's an e-discovery request, a data subject access request, um, how you know implementing a uh, breach response plan, all those sorts of things play together. And so I wouldn't say it's, and, and, and when I look at that, GRC has been around forever, but GRC has always been more about IT or business continuity or HR. I believe that GRC is almost like information governance, this giant umbrella of a term, but underneath it, you're gonna have categories. And what we're seeing, and, and we're talking with analysts, we're talking with our clients, and nobody's disagreed with me, which is shocking because analysts always disagree with you, right? <laughs> um, is that going forward, legal is going to have to think about their compliance and risk and governance obligations to the organization. And so what we're doing is innovating around a common platform that's going to address these issues. And for the things that we don't do, like matter management, we're going to, you know, we're going to continue to maintain our connectors so that the external legal GRC platform is, is that central hub, but you're still going to be able to use your favorite tools for very specific uh, areas that we just don't touch. It's about tying it all together, right? Managing exactly the, managing the entire process, um, and all with that that inventory of knowing what your data is. Yeah, no, and that's I've said it for years. Uh, the foundation of e-discovery is knowing what you got and where you got it. So, um, you well, know. you think about you know think about how how hard it is now. You know, you talk about how we're doing in the COVID time, Slack. You know how easy it is to set up a new Slack channel. How easy it is to uh, do a new SharePoint or Teams channel. How easy it is to use Google or set up a new place to store in Box. Yeah, having the ability to connect to those um, data sources automatically identify them, right? Because the last time I I did an e-discovery search on Michael Cordero, I had no idea that he was. You know, that was way before Slack came out. I didn't know he had four new channels that he's you know <laughs> putting data on right so being able to go out and in many cases preserve in place but certainly search do early case assessment and, and, and then do a targeted collection as opposed to just give me everything and then have to try to go through it all right and then again back to the innovation around e-discovery we're we're continuing to do those sorts of things because that's what our clients need Great stuff. Great stuff. All right. One more question. And then we're, we're going to get into, we're going to try to have a little fun here. So you got uh, Xterra acquired um, Jordan Lawrence, a privacy and information governance company. How's that gone? Tell us a little bit about that integration and what's the sort of future forward strategy there with the acquisition? Uh, I mean, it's everything that I just talked about, right? Yeah, I can Jordan, Lawrence, Jordan Lawrence by far has the best, most, or have, because they're, they're now Xterra, right? All right. But, had the most robust enterprise class data inventory solution on the market. And it's one that because they developed it over like 25 or 30 years could be implemented within 30 days. You know, a lot of the competitors in that space 
sometimes take years to get an inventory. And by that time, you know, it's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You start and then a year later, you just turn around and keep doing it, right? Whereas with Jordan Lawrence, it's so easy to maintain and get that information. So you start there and then, you know, they're in privacy They're They've got by far the best data retention, data minimization product. Again, let's get to the risk. And, you know, everybody talks about defensible disposition, but nobody's really doing it. Well, you have to now because it's actually part of CCPA or GDPR. Right. Right. You talk about privacy, the data subject access request. There's privacy vendors that have a portal and some limited workflow to say, hey, Mike, go get Bill's info because he requested it. But the back end to be able to say, well, I'm going to go find all that information. And, and with consumers, it's maybe not terribly difficult because you're going to keep them in a couple databases. Right. But as soon as uh, California allows uh, employees in, the whole ball game changes. Like we know in, in Europe, there are employee requests that sometimes are over a terabyte of data. So you've got to have a robust e-discovery capability to go find the data, re, you know, collect it, review it, redact it, do auto redaction, do AI based redaction. So the, the acquisition of Jordan Lawrence fit within this vision in, of, of where we saw the market going. And it's been really successful because we've got a giant uh, development team in India that are just wicked smart. And so we're integrating our different products. Now, you know, legal hold is, and, and project management and, and our data management products, all being able to leverage info in the data inventory, came out with a, a DSAR solution. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it fits so well with the thesis of where we saw the market going. And again, nobody's telling us we're wrong there. And every, th that never happens. Somebody always tells you you're wrong, right? right? Yeah. No, people in this business are not shy. Let me ask you a question, Bill. What if, what if an employee's on hold and that employee says, get rid of my data? What do you do then? That's those seem the law, the law allowed, says that, that, that the preservation supersedes the request. So you don't have, that's my point, right? Just because the consumer or the employee says, get rid of my data doesn't mean that you have to, because if there's a business justification, you know, which could include a legal hold or a retention rule from some sort of uh, piece of legislation, mm -hmm. you don't you don't and can't get rid of it because you're under a legal obligation to, re to retain it. And that's why having a retention program is so important and having the ability to see your legal holds and your governmental obligations in one place. Yeah. All right. Some pretty heavy stuff. Let's try to have a little fun here today. Uh, this is what we call four of this or that. And we're going to ask you to identify uh, one of two things uh, that you prefer. Um, and, you know, just have a little fun with it. We could talk about it on the other side. So question number one, Bill, is technology assisted review more AI or machine learning? I think it, going forward, it's more AI. Okay, fair enough. Hyphen or no hyphen in the word e-discovery? Uh, totally hyphen. <laughs> totally hyphen. <laughs> I appreciate that. Listen, in some parts of the world, today is Wine Wednesday. Uh, I know I'm looking for a glass, looking forward to a glass of wine later this evening. Uh, what's your preference, red or white? Red. And what do you what do you pair with a with a red, Bill? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Pretty much anything, but uh, you know, obviously your 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 meats. But yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't I don't follow any of the normal conventions. You know, chicken with yeah. white, or it, I'm just red wine. Hey, I discovered, a, a, I mean, probably late to the game, but if you want a really good red out of Italy, Alianico. Okay. So, and, and there are some uh, U.S. Um, vintners that are now beginning to produce it as well. Awesome. All right. <clears throat> An ultimate question, Bill. Beatles or Stones? Ooh. I'm going to have to say Stones. Really? I, I know everybody says the Beatles, but... I'm more of an R&B and, and uh, jam band guy, and Beatles are a little poppy. Yeah. No, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. Totally fine. All right. That does it for four of this or that. Last question of the day, Bill. You got a book recommendation for our audience today? What's the last good book you read? Ooh. Well, I just got off vacation, so I've been reading trash. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, it wasn't the last good book, but one book that 
from a business perspective that I recommend, and it's fairly old, but it's timeless, is a book called um, Influence, Psychology of, of uh, Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. And he's a psychologist, I think out of Arizona State, maybe University of Arizona, but um, just super easy to read, lots of um, scientific research into how you can help people make decisions and how you can influence them. And then you like, I reread it every time I want to buy a new car because the, the car dealers use every one of these little tricks. Really? If you know about it and it's super easy to read. Yeah. It's called uh, influence by Robert Cialdini. All right, cool. There you have it. All right, everybody check that out. Um, let me take a minute here. Thank you, Bill, for joining us today and for sharing your insights. Appreciate that. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on LinkedIn Live. Please visit Xtero.com to learn more about Xtero vision for the industry. And please check us out on ACEDS.org for more on ACEDS. You can visit our, visit our virtual booth, chat with us, or join our Zoom room at, in the ILTA on Solution Center. And don't forget tonight, we're doing a scavenger hunt and happy hour on Zoom at 530 go to the website, to our live events page, and you can see a, find a link there to register. Bill, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. And please, everyone, be kind to each other. Thank you, Michael. All righty.